All right, everybody, welcome to Hunter's Lodge number five. I am Illusion Weaver, and I have, of course, Cuckoo Puffs with me here. And uh, today we're going to show you a little bit of what's coming ahead in Coin Hunt World. Okay, so Hunter's Lodge five, I can't believe you're at 500. I love it. Let's uh, talk a little bit about the road we have traveled so far. We have come a long way. We are now active in six countries, America, Canada, UK, El Salvador, Philippines, and Malaysia. We have 150,000 signups, hosted 20 plus successful events. We have also started to dabble with NFTs. We have uh, 85 Coinhead World NFTs minted on the Ethereum blockchain. Also interesting to know is we have increased the team since the beginning uh, over three times already. But we could not have done it without your help. We have a thriving community thanks to you guys. And the community as a whole has 130,000 QBs printed. We have 75,000 active user vaults, 80,000 auctions completed. And in total, we have sold 73,000 uh, blueprints in the shop. And we couldn't be happier. Obviously, obviously, I need to give a little shout out to Kevo Strings here, who made this beautiful piece of art that literally is the perfect uh, summary of how awesome our community is. And, you know, this strong community is... is um, the, the proof there is lies in the very, the several strong community run projects that are popping left and right. And now we want to give a little shout out to uh, a couple of them here. Obviously we have the coin and world wiki, which is uh, for many hunters an invaluable resource and side companion to the game, as well as uh, Anakura's coin hunt map. And what most people don't know is that we also have over 40 local run uh, fan discords, and we have over 6,000 members on various Facebook groups on, on Facebook, obviously. So, you know, we are just blown away by, by all this effort done by the community. I'm super uh, thankful for this. And uh, together, it just makes the whole game stronger. So thank you for that and uh, keep it up. We love it. Okay, talking about the Facebook groups, uh, the Facebook groups reach out to us that they want to do a contest. So I think next week they are going to be running a contest on the on the Facebook fan groups. And the rules you will find on the following four, these are the major four fan groups on Facebook. And uh, there will be a contest there. So if you want to participate and uh, you're into Facebook, Facebook, go there, check the rules, and uh, you know maybe you win one of those prizes here. All right. Also, super stoked to announce finally we have our first licensed merch stores going live, and I think they are all live today actually. And you know this is the first one here, which is uh, the um, merch store from the Coin Hunt World Wiki team. So they did a great job coming up with a bunch of cool merch. So why did we do this? Instead of doing a merch shop ourselves, we uh, thought it would be more fun to to involve the community with this. So instead, we created the license licenses that anybody in the community can apply for. And if you get approved, you, you get to officially sell Coinhunt World merchandise. So this is the Coinhunt World uh, uh, wiki shop. I think it's live right now. We also have the Ladies of the Hunt. They also created their own merch store with some really nifty items in there as well. And I think they're also starting to sell today. And we also have Crypto Cornucopia, who, is, who has an Etsy store, who is selling a variety of items with also this um, super cool uh, QB plushie. So go check them out and, you know, support your uh, fellow community members. Well, okay. I definitely want to shout out to Perry, who, um, you know, is our intern, who <laughs> spent a lot of time working on the merch stuff because obviously I failed at that. So, you know, she, she worked with everyone to get the contracts updated and signed. You know, we want to see what types of items people like. We're going to see how well the shops are doing because the next step of this is we want to do some integration with the game itself. You buy a hat and maybe you wear the hat and take it to one of the monuments and you could get extra stuff in the game. You know, maybe you just buy a shirt off of the website and you get a special QB in the game or even some in-game resources. So stuff like that, you know, we, we've got some really cool ideas to tie the merch directly into the game. Let's move on. What is coming next week? First of all, we're going to have new trivia next week. In the English client, we'll have uh, new trivia questions for books, cinema, geography, and wordplay. And uh, the Spanish client will have three uh, entirely new categories for them. They will have math, history, and fashion, totally localized for them. Next week, we will also do some happy hour changes. We're going to separate the happy hour per localized client, which means there will be a separate happy hour for the El Salvador players versus the rest. Also, what we're going to do, we're going to be cleaning up our trivia categories. And uh, for example, you know, we have cinema, films, movies, that should all be one category. And then what we're going to do, we're going to always have a maximum of 10 categories that are active. And then every month we're going to 
take a couple of out and swap it with a couple of others. So we can kind of have a, a different uh, flavor of trivia meta every uh, month. That's good for you guys too, because then you know there is always going to be, if it's happy hour, you have one in 10 chance that your happy hour, uh, well, actually more, but you know, you'll have more chance that your happy hour category will show up. And we'll, we'll tune this stuff if we need to rotate more or less, you know, depending on how people are catching up to the meta, you know, we'll do that. And of course, Renee does an incredible job of adding new questions all the time. So that's going to be pretty exciting. So the goal is for us to keep it fresh for you guys and keep you on your toes. So that's also happening next week. Uh, we're, not, we're not starting with the 10 categories yet, so the cleanup is going to take a little longer, but but next week, the separate happy hour per client is going live. Also next week, we're going to be able to upgrade your HQs to level 5. This will cost you 100k resin, 500 purple paint, and you will have to equip the purple QB to finish the quest line to take your HQ from level 4 to level 5. But once you do, that will enable you to apply a skin to your HQ. Uh, some of you guys already have skin from previous events, uh, but for people who do not have a uh, skin yet at the same time we will launch the lock cabin hq skin in the store so it will be a shop drop for one yellow key with a supply of 10,000. so if you do not have any hq skins and you would like to have a different one this is your chance so that is also happening next week here's a little demo of how that works okay so you will just go to your uh, inventory where the uh, construction blueprints are you will pick the blueprint you want to apply and you just say build here and then boom now we have the gingerbread hq which looks really awesome, by the way. So let's uh, select another one. Let's try the Chinese New Year HQ. Same thing, just built that one. Wow, now we have, this one looks really good in night mode. And then the last one, uh, let's do the uh, hunt, uh, the log cabin. And then you will have a cute little log cabin. So, you know, not everybody wants a McMansion with five rooms. Somebody, some people are more humble. <laughs> all right, so that's HQ skins. Okay then, what's coming in August? First of all, August 1st to August 3rd in El Salvador, for all the El Salvadorians, we will have the Fiesta de San Salvador event, which is their national event, so like uh, Canada Day and 4th of July. So during that time they will have this QB drop plus the pupusas and the surfboards uh, so if you haven't gotten it already you know that is your time to go get the resources and uh, obviously this QB is pretty popular in the auction house so only the El Salvadorians can create it and can feed it to the rest of the community so if you're an El Salvador hunter uh, I would get try to hunt a lot during that event what's so what else is coming in um, August and this is early August early August we're going to do the structures pilot program this is like a beta test for us to be able to test a restaurant type structure before the whole structure mechanism is released so instead of you building it we will place it and it's a sushi restaurant stru structure which will be able to be built on top of real life sushi restaurants and uh, doing the sushi quest you will be able to get uh, resources which could contain the common sushi chef QB blueprint and it also could contain the super rare master sushi chef QB <laughs> blueprint <Yeah. laughs> and the resources drop so you might have to come back multiple times you can do it once a week and that's how you get that so how does the sushi quest work how does the, the the structure work at start we are going to place these manually and just because we need some testing done so we're going to place one sushi quest restaurant on top of a real life sushi place in all uh, capitals of each country that we are active in think about this as like a pseudo uh, monument Right. So there'll be one in DC, there'll be one, you know, in a couple of different cities around the world. But. And eventually what we'll do is we'll, we'll, uh, we'll give you guys the blueprint to make more sushi restaurants. So everybody can then turn their local sushi place into one of, one of these. Okay. So let's take a look how that works. Okay. So this works. You will just drive to the place where it is and you'll see this beautiful sushi restaurant structure on the map. And then, you know, you just go in there and you just have a meal. That's it. That's the quest. You have to just have a meal there. So you start the quest at the, when you sit down. You start the quest, that looks like it costs one green key, and then your QB is just going to be eating there. And while your QB is eating, you don't need to do anything else. Just put your phone down, enjoy your meal, and then in 45 minutes later, you, uh, you will be able to just pick up the uh, reward. So enjoy your sushi, no screen time. <laughs> <laughs> and then 45 minutes later, um, you claim your reward, and then you get a, resource, a sushi resource box, which could have the blueprints or uh, resources that are needed to craft these QBs. All right, so that's how the sushi quest works. 
So uh, I see Final Fight doesn't like sushi, but don't worry. This is a this is a pilot. So we're gonna we're gonna slowly release new types of structures into the game, and each of them will have unique rewards that you'll be able to you know, to get out of it. So for example, you can we will absolutely have a pizzeria structure, and every type of restaurants we will eventually have a structure for. Uh, the sushi shops you can hit once a week. All the restaurant structures will be on a once a week timer, but they will be individual timers. So that's how that works. So oh yeah, one more thing is. This is just our first version. We need to get some data on this. We need to fine tune it. Obviously, we know that, yes, you can park your car right in front of the sushi restaurant and then just don't go inside and just, you know, wait in your car for 45 minutes. Please don't do that. It's important for us that, th that we have good data out of this because this is one of our revenue sources that are that is very important to the longevity of uh, Coin and World. And, and also, if we see too many people cheesing the system, we will just make it uncheesable and it's going to be less fun for you guys. So, you know, just saying that. Also coming early August or somewhere in August, we will have a new uh, in-game currency, Crystal Keys, it's called. And uh, the only way to get Crystal Keys is by either using your in-game collected crypto or via the uh, App Store system inside the Google Store. These Crystal Keys are pretty special because you can't buy them with regular keys. You can't transfer them in any shape or form to regular keys and uh, you can't use them on the auction house. You can use them for two things at the start. They will be used to buy the Adventure Pass, which I will explain shortly. And and it will also be used to purchase the construction blueprints, which I'll, I'll explain later. So that's coming, new in-game currency, Crystal Keys. Okay, here we go. Adventure Pass is our version of the Battle Pass. The Battle Pass system is a, a chain of rewards that you can uh, work your way through by just playing the game a lot. So we will have a free and a premium path, meaning that even without buying the Adventure Pass, you will still get a ton of rewards from the free path. But if you do buy the uh, premium pass, then a lot of premium rewards get added on top of the regular reward. And you progress through it by two things. You can just by hunting will progress you, but very slowly. But you can get a big chunk of progression done by doing daily quests that will be randomized. And Every day. So every day when you uh, at reset time, there will be three new daily quests that will be served up to you. And if you do those quests, you will make big leaps in the uh, adventure pass. Then. Throughout the quest chain, a lot of rewards will be in there. There will be HQ skins, etc. So if you manage to get to the end of an adventure pass before the month is finished, then you will get a rare QB blueprint every month. So we are aiming to get our first to, to get started with the first month of an active adventure pass in September, and uh, it will cost 200 crystal keys which is uh, 1995, I believe. So that's the Adventure Pass. Oh, and, and we should say there'll be other ways to earn crystal keys. It won't just be by purchasing them. We'll give them away as prizes and things, you know, just like we give away other keys. Okay, so that's August. So let's take a look what we're gonna be doing in September. Early September, of course, we'll have the new activity quest, Chill Wheels. Chill Wheels is, uh, works exactly like our current activity quest, which is the walking quest, except uh, instead of walking, you need to be on wheels but you need to be slow so everything that is on wheels but not super fast will work for the chill wheel quest also every day you will have to pick which one of the two you can do you can't do both so you can mix and match the way you like it so your um, ankles get a little of a break and it gives you a little bit more variety to everybody also coming early September is the new reward system. During the Canada Day and the 4th of July, we already experimented with a new reward system where uh, all the vaults were only giving resources and no longer crypto. So this is a, a next experiment we want to do. And in this experiment, every time you solve a vault, you will have an equal chance to either get crypto or a resource box, or you will get offered the choice to pick and then you can choose. That way you, you can kind of uh, define today during events. I see a lot of people will go for more resources. M maybe when there is no event going on and, and there is a big dip in, in crypto, maybe people will go more for crypto boxes. And of course, early September, we will have our second anniversary event, which is called QB Air. Of course, the QBverse needs to have an airline and QB Air is the airline of, of the QBverse. Of course, uh, QBverse does things differently. So they don't use planes, they use cool blimps, like you can see here. And so imagine that new airline is just opening and is going to launch a big festival uh, to celebrate their new uh, airline. Let's take a look. So during the anniversary event QB Air, we will have five new blueprints. One common, one rare randomizer with a twist, one epic randomizer with a twist, one epic and one legendary. 
Jerry. Let's take a look at all of them. This time I'm not keeping any beans, I'm spilling all of them because it's just too much. First one, the first one is the Zack the Air Traffic Control QB, which is the new common QB. This one will drop from the quest chain and should be super accessible to anybody. Let's take a look at the next one. The new rare randomizer blueprint is the flight attendant QB. This is like a randomizer. Every time you print, you're either going to have Natalie, Jamie or Angela. However, the blueprint does not get consumed on print. You can just keep on printing. And this one will just drop randomly from vaults, right? And the new epic blueprint is of course the pilot QB and that's another randomizer. So every time you print this one, you're either going to have George or you're going to have Laura. Okay, and this one also drops randomly from vaults. Next one is an epic one, the Wombat QB. Which is, if you see the animation, you're gonna freak. It's incredible. The Wombat QB does not drop from vaults and it does not drop from the quest chain. You have to be in the top 500 of the leaderboards at the end of the event of the air, the QB Air Challenge leaderboards, which I'll, I will explain later. All right. And of course, what are we missing here? We are missing the legendary. So, a little bit of context. We only release one legendary per year and it only has one blueprint. So, it goes to one player. Last year, it went to Zach, who got the architect and he had to literally sell everything he, he got to get it. So this year it's time for the second legendary, which is drum roll. Ace, Ace QB. Legendaries have a passive buff and this guy has one too. And who, how to get this one? Well, whoever is the number one spot on the QB Air Challenge leaderboards get this one. That's it. So totally. we, we reserve the right to do a couple more legendaries a year, but they will always be like one of one. You know, I want to put that out there because we haven't decided what we're going to do for Coin Hunt Fest yet, so... Oh, yeah, true. We should have a legendary there. So it's time to talk about what is this mysterious QB Air challenge, right? QB Air. During the event, you will see the QB Air blimp uh, hovering in the air over your HQ. And you can tap on it. And when you tap on it, that's how you enter the QB Air Challenge. You need boarding passes to uh, to do the challenge. So for every boarding pass you have, you can do the challenge. So there will be a couple of boarding passes you can get from the quest chain. And then you can buy additional boarding passes from the shop. But they will cost one red key per additional boarding pass. You will answer a series of trivia questions divided into four rounds. Each round gets harder and harder. And uh, the farther you get, the higher score you get. And with that score, you go onto the leaderboard. And also, during your entire run, Whatever was your best uh, answer, that one will also reward you with crypto. Here's how it works. So I let's say I start and everybody starts with four lives, right? So I, I start round one and, for, and in order to complete round one, I have to answer four blue tier trivia questions correctly. Every time I get a question wrong, I lose one life. Once I lost all my lives, it's game over. Once I solved four correct blue tier questions, I move on to round two. And now I'm going to have to solve three green tier questions in order to move on to round three which will then make me solve two yellow tier questions. And then I move on to the final tier where I have to solve one red tier question in order to get to the finish line. Let's say I busted out at the first yellow question and, and during my whole run, my best answer was a perfect green. That means I will get the crypto from, from a perfect green. If I manage to get to the end and I have a perfect red, you will get the crypto worth from a perfect red. A whole bunch of things factor into uh, how your end score is calculated like uh, all the lives remaining, how many um, perfects you have, etc. Uh, that all calculates into the final score and then your final score goes on to leaderboard. So you can always just, you know, run the run the uh, uh, QB Air Challenge again to try to get a higher uh, ranking. And like I said before, top 500 gets the uh, Wombat QB, number one gets Ace. Does he get Ace and the Wombat? Yes, yes. Okay, so also coming in September after the anniversary event, we will do tagging. So you already know this little icon here in the menu bottom right that is now disabled that will become the tagging icon and when you tap on that icon the game will switch between game mode to tag mode and uh, in tag mode you will see all the tags on the map we need your help to improve the accuracy and the, the level of detail in the cubiverse right we of course right now we we know you know where big things are like a church and things like that but you know the the map data that we use for example does not know where where a beautiful graffiti artwork is in the city so example tags bus stations sushi restaurants, banks, pizzerias, fountains. Is this a walking cycling path? But also more abstract things like grassy open fields small, grassy open
open fields large, right? It could be, we will have tools in the game where you can define, hey, this is a park and this park has a big open field and it's at least 300 meters radius. So we can put a grass open field medium tag in here, which we then can lose, use later in the game to put like a big structure on top of that and so on, right? So tagging is like the prerequisite for structures. We need to have that in the game. So you guys can tag everything for us and then, and then you can start building on top of these tags. Okay, now what's coming at the last part of the year? Structures. Okay, this is a really, really big thing, and this changes the game. The Cubiverse is um, is a big place, and we want it to cater towards different playstyles. We already have the Hunter playstyle, you know, everybody knows about that. But since the Auction House, you already start to see that some people really, really enjoy the trading aspect of the game. And so there is also like a, a type of Hunter that, that came to be, it's, let's call it a trader. And we also have a producer, like who... who uh, people that enjoy obtaining blueprints and then creating cubies and selling them to other players. Uh, we just started working towards the explorer type with the monument in uh, on the volcano quest in Hawaii. And we will uh, work more on that next year, but that is also a, a separate part that we're thinking about. But for the rest of the year, we want to focus on the building part. What we, what we have in mind there is a certain percentage of our player set is going to be really into building. Uh, that building pro process will be very elaborate, but, it, but so not everybody enjoys it, but that is fine because the people who built are building it for everybody. If I build a structure, that structure is not just for me. Every player will be able to enjoy that structure. So in essence, a percentage of our player base are going to building out the metaverse so everybody else can enjoy the wide variety of structure that you, that you, that you will find on their hunts. Next year, when you go on a hunt, you'll have a wide variety of things to do with different rewards, etc. So as an example, I'm going to guide you through the process of uh, what it would take to build a bank. So four steps. First step is buy the blueprint. Okay, so the buy the blueprint there will be a construction blueprint shop and that will sell blueprints with crystal keys. We will have common, rare and epic tier blueprints, but we will only trickle a certain amount of blueprints into the shop every month. So uh, when they sell out, they sell out and then you need to wait until the first of the month until they get replenished. Of course, we will have way more common ones in the store versus epics. So some of these blueprints will be very rare because we don't want, you know, a bank every 10 meters everywhere. However, one thing to keep in mind is once you buy a blueprint, the blueprint blueprint you have is an inactive blueprint. The second step is now you need to activate that blueprint. How do you do that? Oh, sorry, I forgot one slide here. So here are the first uh, five blueprints that we will be selling in the shop. So we'll have the user vault, which is the new version of the current user vault. So we will have a transition system where you can still have your old user vaults, but eventually everybody will have to transition to the new user vaults. We'll have a fountain, which will do something with a buff. We'll have rare structures, the trade check and the resin tree. Let me talk a little bit about the trade check. The trade check is a rare level structure that will take a green key, but in return, you will get a box with a big chunk of rare or epic resources. So during events, epic resources will no longer drop or have a super small chance to drop from the regular user vaults. And instead, you will need to go hunt these trade checks for them. And then we'll have one epic structure to launch, which is the bank. And uh, what the bank will allow you to do, the bank is for people who cannot export or has chosen not to export yet. And they're sitting on like a, a nice chunk of in-game crypto. They can stay that crypto in anybody's bank they don't need to build their own bank eh? if any somebody builds a bank in you your neighborhood just go use their bank you can stake a bunch of crypto in the bank and that will start earning you a yield in keys and and actually and someone was asking on the stream about like why you would build these structures it's similar to the user vaults today as people use your structures and put keys into it you get a kickback in keys yeah yeah so pretty much every structure that will get used by other players the owner of the structure will get some kind of benefit out of that yeah and before you uh start uh, uh, crying. This is this does not make the game pay to win. This is pay to build. Big difference. Now we we bought this blueprint, but it's an inactive blueprint. In order to make it active, step two is I need to get it stamped. You take your inactive blueprint to a print shop. Oh, for sorry, sorry. First, I need to explain what stamps are. Stamps are going to be dropping in the game very soon. Uh, I think uh, early August. And stamps will drop from a low chance on green vaults, a high chance on yellow vaults, and it will also uh, drop as uh, premium rewards in the adventure pass. One specific thing about stamps though, stamps, uh, so Canada will only drop Canadian stamps. You know, Philippines will only drop Philippine stamps. Okay. So what you do then with these stamps, take your inactive construction blueprint to a print shop, 
and it will tell you, okay, for this uh, construction blueprint, you need three unique stamps. If you only have USA stamps, you will need to use auction house to get stamps from your uh, fellow coin hunters from other countries. And once you have the correct amount of stamps, a QB will stamp it for you. Now we have an active construction blueprint. Step three, now I can start the build process. In order to do the build process, you just take your active blueprint to the tag that, that is compatible and you want to build it on. Let's say I have a bank blueprint and I know that there is a bank tag down the streets. So I just go there and if nobody else has built a bank yet there, I can start the building process right there. And this is how it works. You start by inserting your active blueprint. Then the game is going to do a couple of boundary checks, which just means like it's going to check, hey, if it's a bank, no other bank is allowed in a one mile radius or something like that, or no other structure can be closer than 10 meters. So it's going to do a couple of boundary checks to make sure you're good to go here. Third part is you need to select a QB that is going to be the project leader for this construction project. And you can only use the construction family QBs. And depending what QB you put to work there, the, it will have an effect on the total building time it will take to finish this structure. If you put in a regular construction QB, it's going to be slow. If you put in the architect, it's going to be fast. So at that point, once you have uh, uh, assigned a QB to start the building process, on the map, there will be an uh, idle construction team sitting there. It's the dozer sleeping stage. And at that stage, we are now collecting resin. So everybody, again, like it is now, everybody can add resin to the construction project. And then once the resin is completely filled, then the, the construction site become active. All the QBs go to work and they start building the bank. Now, that's not finished yet so now the the bank will be there and you'll see like a sign coming soon bank project owner uh marlov you will also have a, a ability to speed up so other players who just come across this build side say oh man marlov is bu building a bank here that's cool i want to help out because i want to use this bank every player can add one of their construction cubes to the crew and the more player to do that the shorter the construction time becomes and of course you know if you drag in a foreman it's gonna speed up more than if you're dragging a regular construction cube this does not burn the cube once the construction is finished, all the cubies go back to their owners. But while your computer, your QB is working, it is out of your inventory, so you cannot use it in an other construction site or for your own building project, etc. So eventually, the time will reach zero, and then the construction is complete, and then your bank will now appear on the map to everybody. However, the bank will be closed. Okay, and that is because we need to do step four, and step four is operate. The bank is there, but it's closed. It's so now I need to put somebody to work in there. Each structure has to be operated by at least one QB, and each structure will have a list of compatible QBs. However, some QBs will have an additional bonus effect when you equip them into a certain structure. Uh, and we'll, we'll leave that up to you guys to, to find all these different combinations. But I'm going to give you one example. If you build a fountain, you will be able to put any rare QB to operate it. But if you put a uh, sorry, the water elemental QB in there, you will get an additional bonus. And of course, QBs that are working in one of your structures, they are no longer part of your inventory. And then keep in mind that you know this is the first layer we're going to have leveling of qbs and leveling of structures as well so that'll further differentiate the qbs so not every water qb will be the same because some of them will be higher level than others yeah so uh like i said i think i made it clear like not everybody has to build that you can just sit back let other people build and then just use their structures that's a very valid uh, uh, viable strategy uh but some people some people really enjoy the building process and again the, the reason why we're doing this is because we want you guys to build a cubiverse instead of us which i think is a lot more fun we could just place everything ourselves but where's the fun in that right rainstorm asked a question about you know if you can destroy a structure once you've placed it our vision for this is that you'll be able to trade structures so if you if you go through the process of building a fountain but you don't want to own it anymore then well we're going to come up with a way where you can put it on the auction house for other people to bid on and, and take control of um uvs uh, somebody's asking about uvs uh UVs will be very, very cheap and uh, everybody will get one UV blueprint for free to get started. So now we're going to talk a little bit about what's on our vision for next year. One little caveat though, this is like a little far ahead. So these things might definitely change, but at least uh, we'll give you like the big bullet points of what we're hoping to achieve uh, next year. Sorry, I see one question that's interesting. There are no leaderboard points for building. Instead, there will be builder points. So there will be a separate leaderboard for builders, and uh, but are completely separated from uh, the current leaderboards. The current leaderboards are hunting leaderboards. So that's different. Yeah, I mean, if you think about what we're trying to do here, we wanna, we want to, rem we want the current game mechanism of hunting to be free for everybody. So you know, there, you just go out and you do the same thing that you're doing today. Hopefully, the rewards will start to get bigger, um, you know, as things get built out. But that's what 
what the current game mechanism uh, is going to stay. And then building is a separate layer, you know, that's separate and it's optional for you to participate. You don't have to participate, but you get the advantage of it if somebody in your neighborhood is doing it. Okay, so 2023, we have uh, one big secret. We can't talk about it yet, but the plan is to reveal it in December. So I just want to give a little teaser there that we are going to have something big to announce in December. Next year, we will have an intro tutorial for new players. We weren't too worried about it right now because we're still in like, you know, tweaking mode. Uh, uh, but early next year, uh, we will get that done. We'll have more different export options. We're talking to a couple of different partners for that right now. We will have achievements in a wide variety of activities to do in the game. We'll have tribe structures and tribe quests. You'll be able to level up your structures. You'll be able to level up your cubies. You will be able to level up or mint cubies and blueprints as NFTs. And then you'll be able to import and export those NFTs inside and out of, out of the game. And uh, one more thing for next year, we will have the very first Coin Hunt World Fest in Las Vegas, Q1 2023. More details on that, but I'm uh, looking forward to meeting a lot of you guys there. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, one other thing that's not on the slides is that we are refreshing the user survey and we'll be sending that out as well. So um, expect that we'll start doing the user survey uh, towards the beginning of August, you know, so we can collect feedback on the various events, collect feedback on some of these ideas that are coming up. And then just like everything else, the, the reason that we're sharing these ideas with you early is that we do want feedback. So what we've shown may not be the ultimate design once, uh, once it's deployed because we're listening to what the players are saying. Yep. Okay. So that is it for Hunter's Lodge number five. Thanks everybody. The first question from general chat is, will the choice between crypto or a resource box be only during events or all the time? I don't know yet. So we will start by testing it during the anniversary uh, uh, event, QBR, and after that, we'll see. One more thing though. If we do decide to do it all the time, that will give us uh, a buffer to put more crypto rewards in other parts of the game, which we kind of need because with all the quests and structures coming, you know, that might be handy. Okay. And another question from general chat is, can people still have 10 user vault structures if they purchase the blueprints or are user vaults going away completely? Uh, yes, uh, maybe not 10, but you will have more than 10 structures. You, so there will be a system where you can buy structured slots and the more you buy, uh, eventually it gets pricier and pricier. And then what we will have, but you will have you will be able to own much more than 10 structures. However, there will be certain rule sets for each structures. For example, you can only own one bank. Yeah. And for example, maybe you can only own five user vaults. Uh, and, but the old system and the new system will coexist for a, a little time. So not all the user vaults are certainly going to be gone. Uh, so they will just fade out while the new user vaults fade in. Okay. And another one is, can you get straight crypto for answering trivia still? I don't know what that means. Uh, I also don't know what that means. Uh, I think the answer okay. is yes, yes, you can go yeah. to a vault. Yeah, you can open a vault and get the crypto, yeah, for sure. Okay. We have another one from W.R. Wilm, who's kindly uh, videoing everything for us. Uh, can you access the QBR challenge from anywhere, or is it just from your headquarters? Well, um, if some of the OG hunters here will probably remember the floating vault, which worked a little bit the same. And one of the issues we had with the floating vault is the floating vault would always be circling around your location. So it wouldn't matter where you were, it would always be there. The problem was that a lot of people then thought that they had to go and catch it. So they were literally chasing it with their car for an hour. Uh, uh, <laughs> So that's a little bit of a problem. And then the other problem is we want to make sure that people are on very stable connections when they do the QB air challenge, right? Because it's, you, you have to pay a red key. And if you get disconnected halfway through, you know, you lost your key. So in order to do that, I think what we want to try at least in the beginning is just keep the QB air blimp circling around your headquarters. No worries. Only you can see it. Obviously nobody else can see it. Uh, so, um, and then at least we'll know that people will be on a good connection. To in order to do the challenge. Okay, thank you. And another question from WR Wilm is, can a player purchase multiple of the epic structure blueprints and monopolize them? Yeah, we don't know yet. I know, uh, we know that there is going to be a limit on how much, how many epic structures you can own. I don't know yet how many you can buy. It's probably a good idea to put some limit in there as well, but I don't know how the exact number yet. 
Okay, thank you. And this is the last of the people who cannot speak for themselves uh, for the QBR challenge. Will we be able to see the leaderboard during the event? And that's from Zenny ABC. Yes, absolutely. You, you will be able to see the leaderboards before you even start the QBR. As soon as you tap on the blimp, the first thing you'll see is the leaderboard, the current rankings. Okay, thank you. And we're going to invite Corkio to the stage. Corkio, please accept the invite. Hey, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Corkio. Hey, uh, wonderful Hunter's Lodge. Uh, just have to say that. So much information. I think all of our heads are spinning. I don't even know how to come up with questions about all the new stuff. So my question is about merch. I know that we've heard for a while that there will be integration within the game. Do we need to make sure to keep track of the people that are buying stuff now? Or are we expecting that integration stuff will just be like products purchased in the future? And yeah. the how will be for stuff in the future? Okay, so the stuff that people are purchasing now is just for their merch and not with game integration. That's right. So what's going to end up happening, we, we have a, um, a team that we're working with. The idea is that uh, we will integrate unique QR codes into items that will be supported within the game. And then you'll have to scan those QR codes into the game. So imagine like you, you have a water bottle. Each water bottle issued a specific QR code that you could stencil into the water bottle or however you're going to do it. And then, uh, and then you would scan that water bottle in the game and you'd get whatever item you're going to get. Like it could be an in-game water bottle. Like who knows? Awesome. And will the merch sellers have like kind of leeway of how to handle that? Because some of us are using, well, I, I know uh, the merch shop and I are both using drop shippers. So we don't actually have access to the packaging and, and the stuff going out. Like will we be able to electronically send that to people and, and stuff like that? We'll have to kind of see on a case by case basis. So the, the, the team that we're working with who, um, who do these, like, it's, it's called digital. They do like basically physical NFTs. They have a way to like insert themselves into the manufacturing process. So they, they have APIs where when you, when you go to print a shirt, you would call an API. And then that API will generate a QR code that you could then put on the shirt somehow. So they, they already have merchants that they work with where this is integrated. And we'll just have to see, we'll have, we may have to work with your merchants that are printing uh, your items to see if they're capable of supporting their uh, Fidgetals API. Okay. Anyway, it's all an experiment. Like we're, we're going we're gonna to start very slow. So we'll, we'll probably pick like one item from each merchant and try to do uh, the you know the in-game integration. Okay, great. We'll move on to Anakura. Anakura, come up on stage. Hey, hey. Um, so my question is about using a red key for QBR, and if that activates uh, the referral bonuses. No, it does not. Okay, so is there any way to get the uh, red vault referral bonuses without red vaults? Um, no, we need to rework that. Um that um, referral bonus and we'll probably rework it we might rework it so it works with the uh, qbr but uh yeah we, we have to revise that for sure thanks hi spooky hey can you hear me yes hey i was just wondering with the uh, added gamification coming to the game any thoughts on what the chances of the ios app store approving it yeah, so this is actually uh, something that we hope will help us get approved on the App Store. Um, you know, if there is a uh, in-app purchases and Apple can get their cuts, they might be a lot more interested in talking to us than they are now. So yeah, fingers crossed. We can't make any promises, but I mean, you know, let's see what happens. All right, cool. Thanks. Can we have Toasties, please? And you're promoted Toasties. Hey, Toasties. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. All right, perfect. So my question is about the UVs. You mentioned uh, that we'll have one free UV at some point when the structures take over. So does that mean that if players don't elect to purchase new structures to replace their, you know, 10 UVs, the number of UVs out there would decline? Or would everyone always have access to 10, you know, UVs to, to put out? 
No, we will. There will be a long period, probably like let's say three months of uh, where the old UVs will still work. So we will just keep reminding people to change, and you will. We will make sure they want to change too, because in the new system, you'll be able to upgrade your uh, UVs, and the old system won't. Also, the new system of UVs will have a, a, a much higher uh, key uh, kickback than the old system. So you know you will definitely want to upgrade your UVs, but we will give you plenty of time to do so. So don't panic. Now, and another thing is. Um, the ground around your UVs right now, any tags on that ground, you will have the first right to build anything on that. So you, in essence, everybody with UVs right now has claimed that territory for the structures. Hey, Zach. Hey, exciting Hunter's Lodge, guys. My question is around structures and build times, and I noticed there weren't specific build times. So I was wondering if you could give us any indication, for instance, how much... Uh, time it takes to build a structure by default, I imagine it's different based on the structure and the rarity, but then part two of the question is how much is the build time reduced by for um, contributors like the construction foreman and and yeah. Perfect. So we're still, we, we have to tweak those numbers during testing and we're not at that stage yet, so I can't really say that. Um, but one thing I can guarantee is going to be a lot longer than what it is now. So the one hour build time is going to be much, much longer. Every structure is going to take a lot longer than, than one uh, hour. And obviously, like the rarer the structure, more than likely, the longer it's going to take to build. Yeah, so like really rare structures can easily take a month of building time. Hello, Lala PUBG. Good evening. How are you all? Good. Good stuff. No GIF. So you'd be happy to hear that. But my question is, uh, you mentioned all the events that are happening this year, but there was nothing in relation to the UK event. So is that not happening or it is, but it'll be just a small no, it, event. It, it totally is. I forgot. I forgot. Yeah. yeah. So a Guy Fawkes Day, there will be the the yearly uh, UK uh, event, 100%. Yeah. Sorry okay, about that's that. All I, that's fine. I need to print those UK QBs. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. No worries. So we're going to move on to Luke Vend. Hi, Luke Vend. Hi, okay, sorry, forgot to push to talk. Uh, uh, it's a bit of follow up about the referral system. Uh, it would be appreciated if there's any plans about reviewing how the referral stats are uh, displayed in the game app. Because with all the changes with uh, the HQ system and things like that, uh, we'll never get to see a referral, a key, blue key or something like that. So is there any plans to change that as well? Yeah, we need to, we want to do an entire revamp of the referral system. It, it works right now, but it's definitely a lot of room for improvement. Um, so that is definitely on the list uh, for us to you know, just redo the whole thing from scratch and make it a lot better. I don't really have an ETA on that, but it's definitely uh, coming. Great, thanks. Okay, and we're gonna invite Selmio to the stage. Hey guys. Hi, Samuel. Hey, thank you very much. Really enjoyed it. It was, it was pretty mind blowing stuff. Um, my question is, are there any plans to even things up a bit so that players who live in like rural areas will have equal access to vaults and green vaults and yellow vaults and things? Or is it, or is it still going to remain a, a, a city based sort of advantage? No, now that we have the structure system, what I, what I can, uh, what I would like to do, but I don't have any details yet. But maybe some, maybe some blueprints can will only be sold to uh, to players in the rural areas, and, and and that will you know give you some sort of an advantage. Thank you very much. Thanks. Good night, guys. So we're gonna move on to K Hag. Hey guys, great presentation. Hey um, K Hag. I am shocked at how much. New stuff you managed to squeeze in there. I'm looking forward to all of it. Um, I wanted to go back to two things mentioned at the last Hunter's Lodge, um, or between then and now, I suppose. Are you guys able to uh, commit to not adding any new countries until exports are working in the current countries? Yes. Okay. I thought I had saw that in the Discord, and I, I don't know if it was said in the presentation today, but I think that that's awesome for for the people that are. Uh, anxiously awaiting their crypto and uh, uh, QB display cases were like a big thing in the last Hunter's Lodge. I thought that was really cool. Um, they've been out for a couple months, and at, at the present time, they're just purely cosmetic. I haven't heard 
anything about plans for those for the future? Will they ever be more than just cosmetic? Like you got to have a certain display case with certain QBs in it to advance a quest chain, for example? I would I would reckon yes. I don't have any active plans to do that right now, but I, but you know next year I can totally see that happening. And also I want to kind of extend it uh, a little more. It would be nice to it would be nice to instead of if you tap on a button to go to somebody's display case. What well, okay? This is like the long term vision, right? Imagine you browse through the leaderboards and you find, for example, you know, um, free Yayo, and uh, you tap on uh, on a little button on on his uh, leaderboard position. And it goes to another screen where you see his HQ, but just his HQ, not the location, obviously. And then you can you can literally go inside his HQ, and you will see art, like NFT artwork on the wall. You'll see inside the house, you will see like a big display case with all the QBs. You'll see a, a, like um, awards he has won. You know, a whole thing to like show off all your accolades in the game. That that's the, like the long term vision of of that system. And the the current QB display case is just like a little baby step in that direction. Let's have Rydell up. Hello. Hello. Oh, hi. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if with the sushi restaurants, if they are going to be, if the UK, is that just London or would it be the individual countries within the UK? All of them. So, you know, so, uh, Edinburgh, uh, Glasgow, Glasgow uh, the whole shebang. They will all have one. Yeah. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. So I saw that, you know, y'all are rolling out. Um, HQ level fives um, with the skins. Do y'all have any plans to give level five HQs additional functionality? Yes, um, but we need our structures for that first. So uh, I, it will have additional functionality, like access to the uh, HQ booster antenna, but we don't have that system in the game yet. So yes. And Rudy Tootie, you've been invited. Please accept the invite at the top of your screen. Hey, Rudy. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, my question is regarding the QB Air leaderboard. Um, will hunting affect that leaderboard, or will it just be those specific four uh, categories? And if that's yes. the case, um, what happens if everyone, like if multiple people, get all perfects on that? Um, it will not. Hunting will have zero effect on the QB Air challenge leaderboards. It's purely going to be running the um, the challenge. And uh, the way we created it, it's I doubt it that that there's going to be many people with the maximum score. I, 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 you don't know the details yet, so and I can't really say yet because we're in testing right now. But um, yeah, once we get closer to release, those details will be revealed, and then you will understand that it's it's going to be hard for anybody to have same score. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of ways to differentiate people. You know, it it, it could even come down to. Even within perfect, how quickly are you answering questions and things? So there, there's going to be multiple ways to differentiate scores. Oh, hello. Uh, so I have a question around the building uh, system that's coming out soon. Uh, how will inactive players and generally folks who've just quit the game uh, be handled through this new system? And as crowding occurs, uh, how will new players be able to contribute to building? Uh, I'll answer your second part first. Like, that is not a bad eff effect in our opinion. Um, it, like, and this happens already today. If you today you start playing in uh, downtown uh, Toronto, you're not going to find any space for a user vault. So that's already the case. And that is not necessarily a bad idea because it also means as a new player, if I start there, I will have a, a wide variety of stuff to do instantly. Um, so the building phase is is uh, not going to be something that is going to be everywhere forever, right? In an area where there is lots of hunters, there will be a lot of building going on when we release it. But five years down the line, it will all be fully built, right? And we might just, you know, then and then the upgrade system becomes more into play, obviously. So of course, it's going to be definitely um, a uh, rush to to uh, and, uh, and a sort sort of real estate grab in the beginning of the um, structure system. So that's the first part. Oh, and the second part. And then the first thing is, is like, uh, what do you do with people who stop playing or get banned, for example? What we're thinking is that if you don't, there will be some kind of upkeep maintenance with your structure. Like maybe you need to use it yourself X times a month. We'll, we'll figure out the details. And if you fail that upkeep, uh, your structure will go up for auction and it will be a public auction for everybody that is that can uh, be at that location. Generally speaking, I think it's, you know, it's, it'll be good if, um, at 
at least this age, if people, uh, if some players are leaving the game, then others will be able to take their real estate. Yep. Hi, KSG. Hello. All right. Uh, thank you for all the content that you're going to join um, into the game. It's going to be a lot of fun to stream it and create more content. Um, that segues into my question. Uh, you spoke about promoter roles for content creators in the past. I was wondering if you can elaborate on this. Yeah, it's something we want to do. It's just, it's just one of the things that went back through the backlog and, and we, we kind of need to re-dig it back up. And to be honest, I don't think we'll be able to get to it until next year. Um, this, like from now until the end of the year, we're going to be focused on structures, but it, it will, it, we will come up with something. 100%. So I, I, I just can't tell any timing right now. Okay. And we have a few more questions from people who cannot speak. Uh, first question, are you planning on any API for the auction house? If so, when? Yes, before the end of the year. We'll have the first, first version. <clears throat> Thank you. And uh, we have another question for the structures. If we have a UV set somewhere, will that make it so that it holds our place and someone else isn't able to place a structure there? Wait, I'm sorry. So can you say that again? If there's a UV in a position, will that hold that hunter's place so that no one else can put a structure there? Yes. Yeah, so, so okay. Let's assume I have a UV. Um, in, in in a little in a in a in a corner of a mall, for example, fifty meter radius around that UV, um, that is my territory. Everybody can place tags on my territory. That's not a problem because tags are anonymous. There is there no nobody owns tags. Everybody can tag everything. That's not a problem. However, um, if somebody wants to build something on a tag that is on my territory, they can't. I have first right of, of building. This will not last forever though. So eventually this will also fade away and then everybody can build anywhere. So it's in your own interest to, as soon as the system comes out, start migrating towards this new system. Um, but um, yes, you will have the first right to build on any tags that, that are on your property. And your property means each of your UVs 50 meter radius around it. This question from Despair is, will the QB bl blueprint that you get from the monthly pass be limited to that one month or will it come back some other time? Limited to that month. And Sun Devils, you've been invited to the stage. Hi, Sun Devils. Hi, guys. Um, just a quick question. Uh, for the QB Air um, blimp, are we able to complete that um, that qu trivia quest line multiple times? Uh, so say we use uh, a red to buy a, a boarding pass, and then we're able to complete all all the trivia questions, get the crypto associated with it. Are we able to do it again to get crypto, or would it just be to improve our leaderboard points? Oh, so you can do it again as many times as you want, and every time you do it, you get the crypto word of your best answer during the entire run. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I have this question from... Sam LaRoche, is there a minimum of tags confirmed by players required for a tag location to be confirmed? If I'm the only one who tags something, will it be accepted? Yes, there is a minimum of tags. It will not be accepted if you're the only one. And we have to do this else it does not scale. So one of the big problems we have right now is that a lot of people, they submit user votes to really poor locations. And this is creating a tremendous amount of work for our live op team. Um, we have to manually check all these things. So in order to combat that, this is why we have this system where you need at least three, uh, let's call it approvals from three other hunters that, that will, you know, state like, okay, this is exact, this is indeed a bank, this is indeed a pizzeria, this is a good location, before it goes to the live op teams for final approval. We have to do this, else it doesn't work. Okay, and we have one more question from someone who can't speak. With the trading structures, will we see a monthly auction house leaderboard and will there be rewards or just uh, reputation and status? Hold on, hold on, what? <laughs> what will there that? be a, I guess, structures leaderboard? Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. A build, yeah, yeah, there will be a, building, a builder's leaderboard, yes, yes. And they will have rewards as well, yep. So there will be you there there is no connection between construction blueprints and leaderboard points of on the current leaderboards, not at all. But there will be a separate leaderboard for the builders. 
And there will also be a separate leaderboard for the uh, explorers, by the way. So, but that's that's next year. Okay, well, I see Smoosh here has a question. Let's, let, let, uh, let's, ha let's have him last. Okay, let's get Smoosh up. Hi, Smoosh. Hello, hello. Can you hear me now? We yes. can. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you for the awesome Hunter's Lodge. That was fantastic as always. I'm super excited about all those beans. I have a one, possibly two part question for you. Okay. Uh, for the walking quest, do you have any plans to add a goal beyond the eighth goal? It only takes about two to three hours. Uh, seems to be roughly 12 to 13 kilometers. Is there any chance of perhaps a once a week or once a month like 20k, 30k, 40k walk challenge? That would be so cool. Uh, I really like that idea, so I, I think we should do that. Woohoo! Uh, <laughs> I don't know when though. I'm probably it would be cool if we could get a little marathon runner QB a, a blueprint as a reward for doing that. But also we don't want people to uh you know to die playing this game, so maybe we need to be careful with it. But yes, it's a cool idea. Yeah, please nobody uh die from playing this game. All right, thanks everybody. That's it. That's a wrap for uh, Hunter's Lodge number five. Uh, and yeah, we'll um We'll get all these things we talked about out to you guys as soon as possible. We can't wait to see what you guys are going to do with it. And uh, like I said, the first thing starts happening next week. So keep on hunting. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.